Have you ever wondered why the Avengers and the X-Men never hang out in the movies even though they're practically roommates in the comic books? Ever pondered why Marvel produced movies never seem to use the word mutants? And why do some heroes like Spider-Man, Quicksilver, and the Scarlet Witch make guest appearances all over the place, played by different actors, and then others don't? Well, there's a reason for that, and today we're going to explore why. But first we need to get into the backstory of Marvel's most famous superheroes and the forces that ultimately split them apart. Now, if you're a comic book fan, you probably already know that most Marvel Universe superheroes socialize with each other a lot. For starters, most of them live in the New York area or really close by. Just, let's face it, New York is a dangerous, dangerous area. It's constantly about to be destroyed. And when superheroes from different comics get together, those are called crossover issues. They feature multiple superheroes and are a tried and true way to sell books. Spider-Man, for example, has at times hung out with or battled members of the X-Men, not to mention Daredevil, Deadpool, and lots of others. He's even joined the Avengers and the Fantastic Four at times, you know, just because. And the bigger the superhero, the more the crossovers. Back in the 80s and 90s, Wolverine was one of Marvel's most popular creations, and he appeared everywhere. Need to give your comic book a boost? Just add claws. The 90s also saw the advent of a certain smart-mouthed mercenary known as Deadpool. And like Wolverine, he seemed to show up everywhere. If your title needed a team-up, Deadpool was your guy. And more recently, we had massive crossover events like the Avengers vs. X-Men in 2012. It was a super clash between Marvel's two most powerful super teams and it was really popular. But that's comic books. In the movies, everything is much much more segregated. X-Men only hang out with X-Men, Avengers only hang out with the Avengers, and Spider-Man, well, I mean, he's actually started popping up in other places, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So why are the superheroes so different in the movies? Why do they seem to live in their own universes? In short, because Marvel sold them to the highest bidder. Yeah, and this reason goes back to the mid-1990s, a time when Marvel was on the brink of financial disaster, not that you would know that to look at them now. The comics industry had crashed and Marvel was feeling the financial pain big time. To make ends meet, Marvel struck various deals to license the film rights of its most popular superheroes. That was how Spider-Man ended up in the hands of Sony, and the X-Men and Fantastic Four became properties of 20th Century Fox. And what did Marvel get in return? A measly 5% of the revenue from each film. Painful when you look at them now. At the time, when Marvel sold the rights to its characters, superhero movies weren't looked at very fondly in Hollywood, but all that would soon change, starting in the year 2000. It truly was the future. That year, Fox released its first X-Men movie, and it was a smash hit. Also, Wolverine's super popular there too, who knew? Then in 2002, Sony put out Spider-Man starring Tobey Maguire. It too was a huge success. All of a sudden, superhero movies were huge and everyone wanted in on the action. And yes, we know that Blade was a superhero before and so was Batman and they were very successful and people loved them a lot, but they didn't kick off a superhero comic book adaptation trend. They were almost great adaptations on their own, which made them a little bit different. They were they were TV or movie properties, and a lot of people didn't even know the Blade came from comics. So yes, after the super success of X-Men and Spider-Man, everyone wanted in on the movie action, and that included Marvel. In 2005, its studios division hatched a plan to self-finance its own movies using superheroes that it still owned. Those characters included Ant-Man, The Avengers, Black Panther, Captain America, Cloak and Dagger, Doctor Strange, Hawkeye, Nick Fury, and Marvel had a long-term vision of what it wanted to do. Studio president Kevin Feige planned out a series of interlocking stories that would culminate in huge team-up movies that would include the superheroes that Marvel still controlled, really a lot like their comic model already had. Marvel also started gradually reacquiring rights to its characters where it could. In 2005, Marvel gained the film rights to Iron Man from New Line Cinema. In 2006, Marvel got the rights to Thor from Sony, and Black Widow returned to Marvel from Lionsgate. They really had sold just about everywhere. Hulk also returned from Universal, although Universal retained the right to distribute future Hulk films. Then Marvel also acquired other characters like Blade from New Line Cinema, as well as Ghost Rider and The Punisher. Now, one way Marvel got back some of its characters was through a little loophole in its licensing deals. If a studio didn't make a movie starring a particular superhero over a certain time frame, the rights to that character 
reverted back to Marvel. Remember the Daredevil movie starring Ben Affleck that flopped and Fox didn't really do anything more with the character? So the rights for Daredevil, Elektra, and others returned to Marvel. Now with many of its characters back in-house, Marvel started rolling out its own movies. And I bet a lot of the companies were really sad they let those rights go after the success. The first one up was Iron Man in 2008. Now it's important to note that Iron Man was not an A-list superhero for Marvel historically, but the movie changed all that with Robert Downey Jr.'s wildly entertaining portrayal of Tony Stark. Marvel had its first hit on its hands. Marvel would then go on to release Thor and Captain America, both of which were also hits. At that point, Marvel was a hot property and it was acquired for $4 billion by the Walt Disney Company. And then the Avengers movie was a massive hit in 2012, grossing more than $1.5 billion worldwide and sending everyone else racing to build out their own superhero universes. Marvel has been so successful in making movies that even B-level superheroes like the Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man, yes, they were B-level in the comics, we love them now, they're great in the movies, they're interesting characters, but they weren't huge sellers. Now, now they've headlined successful films. And remember seeing Spider-Man pop up in Captain America Civil War? And that's because after two kind of poorly received Amazing Spider-Man movies, Sony agreed to share the character with Marvel under certain conditions. The two studios are also collaborating on the upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming reboot. That's why you're seeing Iron Man in the trailers, because Sony and Marvel are playing nice for now. Sadly, that is not the case with Fox and Marvel. After the success of Logan and Deadpool, which Fox also owns, it doesn't appear that Fox is gonna give up the rights to its superheroes anytime soon. So yeah, don't expect to see Avengers versus X-Men. Marvel can't even use the word mutant in its movies since that's considered part of the X-Men universe. So that is why you're hearing terms like enhanced person and inhuman pop up an awful lot when people are describing superheroes. Speaking to Collider, Marvel Studio head Kevin Feige had this to say about Marvel's relationship with 20th Century Fox. Well, it's the same as it has always been. I don't want to attribute it as a frozen wasteland or anything like that. We all get along and I see them occasionally, but there's no change in any dynamic. That's corporate speak for, we don't want to say anything controversial, but don't expect anything to change. And yes, Fox will probably reboot Fantastic Four again and again as necessary. Of course, Marvel still has the rights to all the characters when it comes to their representations in comic books, but critics say that Marvel is intentionally letting some characters languish because it doesn't fully own them anymore and it can't make billions of dollars off them in the box office. Critics say the X-Men comics have been subpar and Marvel outright canceled the Fantastic Four series. Chris Claremont, the legendary writer responsible for a lot of the best known X-Men story arcs in the 1980s, says all of that has to do with the fact that the film rights are controlled by what is now a rival company. In an interview with Bleeding Cool about the state of X-Men comics, Claremont said, I think the corporate publishing attitude is, why would we go out of our way to promote a title that will benefit a rival corporation's films when we could take that same energy and enthusiasm and focus and do it for our own properties? Which, I mean, it's kind of a shame considering that X-Men used to be one of Marvel's crown jewels, but the reality is there's big money in the movies and that's where Marvel's big attention is right now. Just don't expect Wolverine and Captain America to go out for beers anytime soon on the big screen. Okay, so where does everything stand now exactly? Well, thanks to the folks at thetoongeek.com, we do have an updated chart showing which studio owns which superheroes and which ones you can expect to see with which ones. Uh, to make it relatively easy, 20th Century Fox owns the X-Men, Deadpool, Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, and most of their high profile enemies like Galactus, Doctor Doom, Magneto, Apocalypse, Sabretooth, and others. They also own New Mutants and Alpha Flight. Meanwhile, Sony owns basically all the Spider-Man characters, including Spidey, Venom, Mary Jane, J. Jonah Jameson, Hobgoblin, and the Sinister Six. And then Universal Pictures still has some claims to Hulk, Namor, She-Hulk, and a few other minor characters. Marvel has pretty much everything else sewed up, and they share Kingpin with Sony and Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch with Fox. That's because those characters exist in multiple universes, but it's also why you see them being played by multiple actors and not really acknowledging the other side is they only exist in that one universe in the movies. So there you have it. While Marvel has tried to round up 
all of its creations or at least as many as it could and it did get a lot of them back. It's still definitely a patchwork quilt of studios about who owns what and that probably isn't going to change at any time soon. Now are there any superhero comics that you haven't seen it taken advantage of in Marvel films that you would like to see? Let us know all those heroes down in the comments below. You can leave Squirrel Girl off that list now that she is headed to TV as part of New Warriors. Isn't that exciting? Uh, but for, you know, anyone else, hey, everyone loves Squirrel Girl. Everyone loves her, right? But for if it's not Squirrel Girl, you have another suggestion, leave it in the comments. Who knows, maybe maybe uh, Marvel will read them. I can't guarantee that, but I also am not gonna say it can't happen. Uh, and if you wanna know more about comics, the heroes, the movies, and adaptations also for DC, make sure you like this video, subscribe to The Know. We'll make sure that you do.